everyone. My name is Whitney Lucas. I'm with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. And today we're going to do a couple uh, patio little centerpieces, uh, mostly from Dollar Tree. I previously did a Dollar Tree challenge on my Facebook page, and that video has been uploaded to YouTube, so you can see that there. Um, and then these are my other two little projects I picked up while I was at Dollar Tree. I only had to stray for a few items outside of Dollar Tree because I just could not find anything else to um, add to them, which is why it's not technically part of my Dollar Tree challenge. It's just kind of a little bit of an extra. So I got two cute little patio centerpieces I'm going to make. Um, so let's get started. Uh, what I want to show you first is um, the. I'm just going to show you a couple of the projects. Um, this first main project. This is the main. This is the main event right here. This little cute wind uh, wind spinner and then the other one also has wind spinners too it's these little tulip shaped ones and you know they uh, they're really cute when they spin as well so that's gonna be the second the second one so mainly for this first one I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pan down to my craft table and then show you guys all the supplies that we're gonna use and then we'll get started Okay guys, as you can see here, uh, these are basically the main supplies that we're going to need for this first project. Uh, here I've got a styrofoam block purchased at Dollar Tree. Uh, I've got a cute little outdoor bucket I got in lime green. This, they had a couple different uh, colors there at Dollar Tree. And then I bought a bag of these heavy rocks. We're going to use some of them, not all of them, in both of the projects to weigh them down a little bit. Of course a wind spinner. They've got lots of different uh, colors and, and, and um, textures and, and different uh, patterns there too. And then uh, also Dollar Tree. And then I got three different colors of this is Deco Mesh uh, Flex Tubing. Um, they call it Mesh Tubing at the Dollar Tree where Easter stuff was out so I got that there. And then that's it for Dollar Tree as far as this was concerned. Because of the great colors I have in here I was only able to find these three colors in, far, uh, in the tubing. And I basically needed to add a little bit more, so I needed a little bit. I'm going to add a purple and an orange, which is why you see these rolls of tulle here. The tulle is going to be mixed in with the deco mesh tubing, uh, only to just give it the nice variety of color. Uh, what I did was I wasn't able to find many other things at uh, Dollar Tree in order to complete the full project. Um, so these these actual uh, rolls of tulle I purchased on CraftOutlet.com. They are extremely affordable and even then tool at your local craft store is not very expensive at all should be about a dollar or a dollar ninety nine a roll um, these rolls are very very large and I purchased them very inexpensively on craftoutlet.com but you can find tool pretty much any craft store or also get online and purchase it from any one of the, the many retailers online so what um, I also am going to use for this project is floral pins this is what we're going to use to secure things into the project. A floral pin is basically a U-shaped item with some sharp ends on it. We're going to use these to press and secure things down into the styrofoam. Okay, so first things first, what I'm going to do is I need to prep my bucket in order to put the styrofoam in here. Now this doesn't fit completely as you can see. It will flip down this way, but I want to have a little bit more surface area. But this is actually pretty lightweight. This is a pretty lightweight bucket. And what I'm going to do is this squin spinner is going to be in the top of it, and it's actually going to need to have a, uh, a, a good foundation so that it won't just tip over when the wind actually pushes this. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually glue some of these rocks into the bottom of the bucket in order to give it weight so that... Uh, this item won't fall over and then basically not work. We want it to we want it to stay up and be cute. So I'm just going to see about how much I possibly need to put in here. Now remember, if you're going to give this as a gift to someone, just hope you don't have to ship it anywhere because it's probably not something that's going to, to ship very well. I'm probably going to just use about half of those and then I'm going to save the other half of this bag for my other project that you guys will see later on in this video. So what I'm going to do here is take the rocks out and we need to glue the rocks into the bottom of this bucket here. 
So I'm just going to add glue, hot glue, to the bottom of these rocks and then place them down into the bottom of the bucket. Um, any which way you want, you can actually just dump them in there if you want, but I need them secured so that I can secure the styrofoam to them. Because the styrofoam, again, it's going to need a foundation as well. So a lot of this is just going to be placing these rocks right down in the bucket. All I'm doing is just gluing them in. And then I'm also gluing some on top of, you know, on top of each other, anywhere you can get a nice good surface. I'm just adding the glue to the back of the rock and then placing that down in there on top of it. The hot glue is going to give it a really good seal, so there's nothing to really uh, be concerned about there. Um, you could also, if you want, just literally squeeze a bunch of glue into the bottom of it and then just press your, your rocks into it. If you, I chose larger rocks so that it wasn't so cumbersome with all the glue. Um, so basically, that right there is what you're looking at. That's basically going to give it the weight it needs so that my star, or so that basically once the wind hits your spinner, it's not going to fall over. So next here, I'm just going to get this uh, star foam block. Got to shave it down just a little bit to get it um, prepped so that it will fit in here. So basically what I'm seeing what's happening here in this bucket is that these four corners are preventing it from going down much further. So I'm going to take a knife and I'll show you guys. I'm just going to cut the corners of this down and off. And this is just a normal kitchen knife I purchased for my craft room. It's just a paring knife. So I'm just going to cut the corners off at a diagonal. Sorry about that sound, guys. I know if that's getting to you. Sometimes that's worse than nails on a chalkboard. And then here we'll just check and see how much further down. Now I've got some good... Yep, that was perfect. That was actually perfect. I got good contact on the rocks underneath there. So I'm just going to glue this guy down next. Just basically fill the bottom of this up with a lot of glue. You don't really want it to go anywhere. Now, it's not going to have a lot of weight to hold when it's in, not in motion, but uh, the wind itself, I'm just going to hold this down with my hands. The wind itself, once it moves, starts to move your spinner, that could cause some problems. You don't want anything to kind of come undone. Um, and then you may want to put some glue down here on the edges through the corners, but I'm also not sure about this plastic. This is a pretty thin container. Um, so I'm not sure if I want to put this hot of glue. If you have a lower setting on your glue gun, then maybe that would be better to use, but I'm basically not going to do that. I'm, I have a secure hold onto the rocks at the bottom, and that's pretty much how I'm going to leave it. This is going to be super fast, guys. This, this one right here is pretty quick, and actually it's just quite, it's just really, it's just really fun, and it looks really cute. Remember, all these supplies are pretty much weatherproof. I don't know necessarily resistant, but um, you know, with time and sun and weather, this project may not last more than just the summer, the current, the current season we're in at the moment. Um, basically, this is cute, a little inexpensive project you can do for maybe a kids' barbecue. You're gonna have a party out during the summer months, springs coming, uh, outdoor barbecues, any kind of parties you plan on having. These are cute little. Um, you know, patio table centerpieces or, or little decorations you could do just to, you know, make things a little colorful, make things a little bit happy. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do here is, if you can see, I'm going to pan up just a little bit. This particular guy here is pretty much the perfect height that I want it. Now, it's going to be a little bit taller because we have rocks down here at the bottom. So the rocks probably come to about right here. So that's actually a pretty good height for the spinner. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this. This is how it comes. It has this piece on the end, and I don't believe that that comes off. Let me just check. Some of this garden stuff has protection, but no, that's just a permanent piece. Um, so basically, I'm just going to use this and make my guide hole. Since it's already pointed, I don't have to really cut anything off. And basically, there is your potted flower wind spinner. And we're going to decorate the bottom right here. So that worked out really well. I'm going to place the bottom of it over here in my glue skillet. 
and just get a really good amount of glue on the bottom of that. And then place it right back into the hole that you've already made. The glue will follow it. I mean, a lot's come up, up on the top here, but the glue will go back down into the hole with it. And that's pretty solid. So you guys can see here, that's pretty much the main event. If you can see here, that's, I mean, how cute is that for your table out in the patio? Having barbecues or, you know, having family over for dinners. Isn't that super cute, guys? So I'm going to push you back down so you guys can watch. Next, we need to cover up this styrofoam block. We need to fill all this in, and that's where all of this tubing and tool comes in. I chose the tool and the tubing because it's basically outdoor friendly. Um, now, with in the sun, in the summertime, the sun will probably fade all of these products. I mean, the, the plastic will probably... Um, fade a little bit. It might crack depending on how hot it gets where you're at. Um, I live in the desert. You guys know I live in Las Vegas. So if it's going to be set in the sun, you know, and it's, it's mainly sun, you know, full sun all day for a long period of time, you're probably looking at a lot of fade. And see this, this is my first time using Dollar Tree um, tubing. And it looks like it's got a lot of kinks in it. That's not good, you guys. That's kind of that doesn't, that doesn't make things look cute. All right, here's what we're going to do with these guys. So I'm going to show you a couple here on the yellow, and then I'm going to do the green and the blue. And then I'll cut away and finish those, and then I'll show you what we'll do with the tool. So with this one, all we're going to do here is we're going to have a couple of the uh, floral picks available and ready to grab. I just have them at your ready. Okay, so you're going to hold the tubing in one finger and then you're just going to pull and you're going to make loops and pinch and loop and pinch loop and pinch loop and pinch and you see how that is that's all you're doing and then you're going to cut it and that's basically we're going to do that times 100 million well you know you guys know what i mean <laughs> we're going to do that many many times and then after that i'm just placing this floral pin you guys saw that i'm taking the floral pin and i'm just putting it over my thumb basically where I'm holding everything here in the middle. And I'm gonna push things down, hold my uh, floral pin this way. And then I'm gonna show you guys right here, we're gonna dip the pieces, the sharp pieces of the floral pin into the glue in the glue skillet. And then place that right down into the project. And some of that glue from the other piece is still still warm so then there's where you get that's the premise of how we're going to fill up the bottom of this bucket so that you really can't see all of any of the styrofoam or you can't really see into the bucket at all um, so basically I'll do it with blue and I'll show you guys again so we're going to take this piece and if you guys need to know measurements, I don't ever measure anything, but I'll show you real quick. This is about, this is four inches from where I'm holding it from the end to here. So you're going to hold and pinch, bring a loop, pinch it, loop and pinch it, loop and pinch it, loop, pinch, and then there's your last tail and you cut it. So basically, it's really just kind of almost like uh, rolling up an electrical cord. <laughs> You know, you take Christmas lights down or you're, you know, after you've um, used anything with an outdoor extension cord and you start to roll things together or any kind of project that you've made that has any kind of long cording. That's pretty much about what you do with the cording. And then you place that right in there like that. I'll do that one more time so you guys can see with the green. And then... I will show you the tool. Hold this guy about four inches down. Pull some down, pinch. Loop it down, pinch. I'm only doing it four times. So you have two loops on the top and two loops on the bottom. And it's pretty uniform across the board so that all of them basically will always look the same. Put the floral pin right through the middle, holding it pinched, 
dip it in the glue pot. If you don't have a glue skillet, then of course at this point what I would do is I would put glue on the ends of the, the floral pin with um, my glue gun. And we're basically going to do that process and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it with all of these, with all the floral tubing. Now, it's going to be a little bit different with the, to with the tool because the tool is more sheer. So I'm going to show you, I'm just going to unravel a, a good amount from the, uh, from, the, from the spool here. And we're going to do almost the exact same. Well, actually, I'm sorry guys, yeah, we're going to do basically exactly the same, but we're going to do it more so that you can see how much tool you need to use and so that it actually has, it shows up. Because if you can see how sheer the tool is, you can't see it until you bunch it up. Once you bunch it up, you can see it, right? So, hold it there, do the same thing, pull, pinch, pull, pinch. So you're bringing that back and forth to your hands, pulling and pinching. So instead of four times, I'm just doing that three times. I'm giving it an additional, uh, just an additional loop to give it a little bit more oomph. Gives it a little bit more of a presence. Do you see what that's gonna look like now? Do you see? And this will also fill up more too. And then uh, you can see here, I have one tail here that's a lot longer than this tail. We're gonna trim some of the tool and then you can also trim some of these pieces once you're done. Um, you know, if something's sticking out further than you prefer. But basically we're gonna do the same thing here. I found that twisting the tool just a little bit in the middle. If you can see here, I basically took the tool, twisted it, and I moved my two fingers up here to hold. Then you can basically put the floral pin right through there. And you can see how you maneuver that to hold that. So you're basically not putting, like that we did with the tubing, now the tool, you're not putting any of your um, supplies into your glue skillet, you're just putting the ends of the floral pin. And then so we're going to pull this, and I'm going to place this guy right here closer to the end of that. And it's just adding a cute little poof of, of color. It makes it, in my opinion, it just, it adds, it adds fun. To me this actually just, it, it either screams party birthday party barbecue it just it to me it just screams fun and then with the way the colors are going to mesh together let me put a purple one in there and I'll show you guys real quick it goes real fast and then again remember I got these uh, tool uh, spools spools of tools say that five times uh, at craftoutlet.com and they're very inexpensive. I got the very large ones, you guys. You may think that that's kind of too much uh, yardage, but it's really not in the in the, in the grand scheme of things because it, whatever you do, it needs more. You're going to end up needing more tool than you think you are. So I bought the large ones. Also, I was making uh, a Halloween project, so of course these are the perfect colors for Halloween. And it just so happens that it worked out perfectly for this cute little patio project. And it hangs over just a little bit too, and that's just, just par for the course, you guys. So if you can kind of start to see what we're doing down here, it's just kind of forming a little bit of a, it's forming a little bit of a, just a, a I call it a beautiful mess. <laughs> that's like the best way I can describe it is it's a beautiful mess. It's a mess that makes you happy. These are the type of messes I like to have, if that makes sense, guys. Put this green one right back under here. I'm pushing them in on diagonally. I'm pushing them in um, pretty much any which way they'll go. Um, there's no right or wrong way, you guys. This is basically just make these cute little loops. Cut them off and then just start applying these colors randomly. Uh, just sporadically, randomly, um, pick another adjective, <laughs> pick another word right there, um, whatever. 
uh, system you get down, whatever you know becomes normal for you, whatever starts to become comfortable and feel good, go with that. This is just basically me showing you my idea of how I think the best way to do this would be. And then again, this isn't something that I went, um, I just kind of grabbed these supplies and it all kind of worked out. And you see that right here, you guys, this is just horrible. Look at that. Come on, Dollar Tree, what are we doing here? And the yellow is kind of not really very yellowy. Next, right next to the green, you can tell it's yellow, but again, this was like, this was their Easter stuff. So, um, I was getting a really good deal. I mean, it's the dollar store, you get a deal anyways, but, um, it was very limited on their colors. So I just grabbed what I could get my paws on. There's the yellow with the green. I'm going to throw the blue on this side as well. Basically just start filling it in and then I'll show you here this per piece of purple sticking out way too far so basically just come in with your scissors and cut that off tool is very very uh, user-friendly <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't try to wiggle its way away from you or anything it's pretty easy to use so uh, what I'm going to do guys is um, I'm going to go ahead and finish these pieces off camera and then I will come back real shortly. Well actually you guys will be back right away and then I'll show you the end piece and then we'll get started on the next project as well. Okay guys welcome back. We have finished all of the tube and tool and I filled it in completely. Look how cute that is. I do have some stray pieces of tool that I have to cut. If you guys can tell here this was the other pieces I put on. I'm just gonna grab the tails and just hold them while I cut. That's just sort of to try to make it a little, just a little bit that's just kind of like this guy right here sticking out way too far. So I'm just kind of making it, trimming it even with the loops. You know, if you can tell here, there's nothing that's kind of, <laughs> there's nothing on this project that has to be absolutely even. Um, that's the beauty of it because it, it's so easy to do. Um, there's no exact science, there's no measuring, there's no nothing. That's basically it, guys. That's this one in a nutshell. Very simple, and then when the wind hits that, when that's out on your patio, it's just super fun and, you know, just sends good vibes when you're during barbecue or having a party or anything else like that. It looks like a flower potted in a flower pot. It's just, I just thought that would be a really cute idea and relatively, extremely actually inexpensive since mainly this is about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is probably under $10. Uh, including the tool. I mean, if you add the entire price of the tool in that you had to purchase in order to, to put the tool in, um, it would, should be under $10, if at the most under $12. So, super cute. Um, and if you guys come up with any other different ideas for putting it, something down here, I mean, you can use deco mesh. You can use um, raffia, which I'm going to use on the next project. I'll show you guys that one very shortly. Uh, but this one was just something I wanted to keep. It's super cute, airy, bright colors. Uh, very party-esque, very, um, you know, summertime barbecue. It just makes you happy to see it out on the patio. Um, also, uh, I needed it to be a little weather resistant, so you can you don't have to take it in every time you, you come back in from, you know, outside. So that's pretty much how I, uh, how I came up with that little guy there. Just grabbed basically everything from the Dollar Tree except for the tool. Now, I'm sure the Dollar Tree does sell tool or even 99 cent store. I did not go there. This was a Dollar Tree challenge previously. So um, this is just what I was able to pull up, and I think it turned out really cute. What do you think? You guys let me know in the comments. So now, oh, and let me tell you, this is what I have left of the blue, and that's what I have left of the green. And this is all I have left of the yellow. Wah, wah. But do you see, remember when we opened that yellow? That bag of yellow had a lot of this nasty stuff in it, so I had to cut a lot of the tubing out. 
So, I mean, uh, worst case scenario, there's more yellow in here than anything, but it was a pretty little, it was a pretty bad batch. It just had a lot of kinks in it. So, um, I mean, if that's something you need to really budget for, and you're not close to the Dollar Tree if you have to go get another bag, or if you're making a lot of these for a party or, you know, a church barbecue or anything else like that, these are super cute and easy to make for um, get-togethers. Um, buy multiple bags, because I only bought one of each, guys. But again, there's still a decent amount left. I have uh, more blue, or I have more green than blue, but there's still a decent amount left over when you add that in. So cute. All right, guys, on to the next one. Let me push this stuff off to the side. And I'll put this girl up here and we'll bring her back when we're done. And I'm going to show you guys the supplies we're using for this next project, okay? Uh, basically, also Dollar Tree, guys. I've got um, this cute little flower tin at uh, Dollar Tree. And I got two cubes this time. The other one just took one. This is going to take two cubes of the star from at Dollar Tree. We're going to use the other half of the bags of rocks that we used for the previous one. This also needs to be weighted down since this is a very lightweight tin. Um, so we're going to put these rocks in the bottom. And then look how cute these tulips are. I showed you guys earlier, um, just a little sneak peek. These little wind spinners, um, they just make me happy. You guys know, I, you guys know um, from my live streams and stuff that I'm obsessed with flowers. So I, I couldn't pass them up. They also had purple and blue and pink. But I chose this one's more warmer stuff. This is more, uh, just a more warmer color. I did more rainbow and cool colors on the other one, multicolor. But this one, I wanted to just, I just took the three warmer colors. Um, I was going to do four. I was going to add pink in. But four seemed too many for this size container. And I didn't see anything else at Dollar Tree when I was there just this last week um, where it would have looked nice enough. So I just bought three. And uh, we're pretty much going to do almost the same thing except for... We're still going to need the floral pins that we were using before. And I got, I've had those at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if you can get those at the Dollar Tree or not. Uh, but floral pins are very inexpensive for even just a huge bag. Um, now here's where I had to go astray. I wanted to put raffia in here, so I'm still going to use raffia. But to fill the entire bottom of this with raffia would have been definitely not cost effective. Now, uh, Dollar Tree does have raffia and they have actually very big spools of it. Uh, but I'm going to use some old raffia that I already have on hand. You can get very large bags of it at any of the craft stores. Um, so I'm going to be using my old raffia. And then I also have old spools of burlap. Now this is a really weird burlap. I, got, I purchased it at Walmart so long ago. I've had this stuff, you guys. For a very long time. <laughs> I've had this these spools of uh, burlap probably for geez eight eight years seven eight years it's been a while. Um, Walmart was clearancing them out and I grabbed it. Um, this was like at the height of the mesh craze when it first started because it actually says mesh ribbon up here. It's not mesh this is burlap you guys and um, it's nine feet long so I mean you could use ten foot uh, ten foot mesh if you want or actual burlap uh, smaller burlap roll. Um, and I did not pay $9.97 for it. I got this when they were clearancing it all out. I think maybe I paid $0.50, cents, $0.40, cents, $0.30 cents for a roll. I got a really crazy good deal on this many, many moons ago. I had a lot of spools, and now this is my very last one. My very last one and a half. And I'm pretty sure we're probably not going to... Well, we'll probably use this, definitely this, and maybe half of that. So I'm going to basically be using that, and then I'm going to put some raffia into the project with the floral pins, and then also these two ribbons. Now, Dollar Tree had a lot of good ribbon, but they didn't have much summery stuff. Um, some of their spring stuff, they were just really odd colors, a lot of neons, and stuff that didn't really lend well to this, this particular project. So these two pieces, um, these are very large spools of ribbon that I got at craftoutlet.com. These are both 50-yard spools. So when you break it down after the price I paid for the spool, this ends up being about 14 cents a foot. 
I don't know that I'll even use 10 feet of it. So that's less than, you know, less than $1.40 each for the amount of ribbon I'm going to use. But yes, you have to purchase the whole spool to begin with. But compensate any which way your budget allows. If you don't already have ribbon on hand, then find something comparable. Everybody's dollar stores and everybody's craft stores, they're all different. Um, I know a lot of people that were able to get a lot of mesh and a lot of different things at their Dollar Trees and the Dollar Tree that I live close to does not have that. So this is just how I had to compensate. So it's not that bad because basically it comes down to being still very inexpensive. Um, if you also want to do this one for a larger project or, or you know, a few uh, barbecues or parties or events, those types of things. So that's what we're going to add. Raffia, natural colored raffia, these two ribbons and this were not Dollar Tree. Everything else is Dollar Tree, which just comes down to the tin, the styrofoam, the half of rocks, and the, the spinners, which the spinners are our main event, so that's where all the, the cuteness is gonna come from. Now see, these guys fit in here really well. I'm only probably gonna need to take a couple of the corners off. We'll see how it goes, because basically this sits in here just right. And do you see how that is? I don't want it to come up too high, so I might end up actually having to cut, I might have to end up cutting some of, one of these in half. So we'll see. And I just bought a kitchen knife fairly inexpensively in order to, you know, in order to get this done so I can cut styrofoam easier. Okay. So we're going to get started and do the same thing we did before. So I can give you a better view of my workstation. And what I'm going to do is get started and I'm going to glue the rest of these rocks uh, down into the bottom of this uh, planter. That's all I'm doing is throwing glue on the bottom of the rock and just gluing them down into the bottom of the of the planter. That way one bag of rocks goes for two projects. So I basically didn't even spend a full dollar on the other one. It was more about more like 50 cents. I mean, you can use smaller rocks if you want. I was trying to just, you know, be a little bit more um, time. So it's less time consuming as far as having to glue down or making sure that you have enough um, time to glue every little tiny rock down. I mean, if you just want to throw a bunch of glue in there and then just kind of put a handful of rocks over it, have at it. Or if you just want to fill the bottom with sand, but just remember you have to have something for your star foam to adhere to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of spread these out in a little bit of a, an odd um, formation since we had a, a, an odd amount left. This is definitely weighted down properly now. I mean, this has got a good amount of weight when you can hold it in your hands and, and you can feel basically how, how the rocks weighted it down. Um, your project's not going to be moving when the wind hits it. Remember, wind spinners need wind, right? <laughs> so you have to remember that uh, you're asking for it. If you don't weigh them down, they're just going to fall over and then they won't spin. And then you'll be sad. So make sure you weigh it down with something. Use glass beads, use rocks from your front yard, um, anything you can find that's basically going to give it the weight that you want it to have. And now we have to compensate in here for the strangeness of sorry guys sorry if that's horribly loud I'll try to I'll try to compensate for that in editing hopefully that's not too bad I know that's kind of a nasty sound for some people It's going to be a little uneven because obviously the rocks in there are uneven. So we just want to make sure that we have enough clearance and that we can take off enough of this to where it's not sticking up too far above the actual piece.
And then we can use the styrofoam together also to support itself. So it's not exactly going to be perfectly even if you can see that there, but it's actually still, it's flush with the top of the piece. And that's what we want. We don't want it to be way too high up because then, um, you know, the bottom of your burlap and your, your raffia and ribbon pieces have to go somewhere. And what happens is you end up, by the way, save these guys. These come in handy. These larger pieces come in handy for all kinds of stuff. I'm sure you guys probably already know that. We're all cut from the same bolt. So basically, um, you don't want your pieces to come up too high because you're pushing your the base of your other uh, coverage to the top of this. So if it only stops up here, if your project, if your styrofoam is up here, your star foam's up here, you're, you're pushing it into here. You have all of this to try to cover. You want, if anything, it to be a little bit lower than the lip of what you're placing your items into, or just flush with it. And I got it pretty much as good as it's gonna get with, um, with the rocks that are in here. And it's okay that it dips down in the middle because we're not gonna see it, and we definitely want it to have coverage. We want it to touch as many rocks and as many things in the bottom as we can get it to touch. So just load the bottom of that up with glue. Just whatever it's going to touch and adhere to, you want to make sure you got enough glue on there for it to do that. I'm going to put this in there, back in here for to gauge. Okay, I'm going to hold that down. And then I'm going to fill the bottom of this one up as well. And then what I'm going to do in addition to is I'm going to place just a little bit of glue here on this side, which is the piece that goes in so it touches this, this inside piece of here, of this, this star foam as well. So you get just a little bit more um, support, just because you're going to glue, glue it to itself, yes, and if you stick anything through it, it'll get stuck, but these particular pieces aren't going to really pull it apart from if, if it's touching and it's going to give us that little bit extra support that we need. And that's basically what you're working with. You can kind of see around in the sides and that's fine, but we're going to cover all of that. So mainly what we need to do is we need to put our flowers in next. So these we're going to need to cut. And um, I thought about doing kind of like a pyramid type shape. Um, you can leave yours all the same height if you want to. There's no rhyme or reason or that to, to anything or a method to my madness, I like to say. Um, basically, like I like to also say, is do what makes you happy. If you want to leave them all the same height, just make sure that they're spaced out far enough apart so that the wind spinners don't hit each other and then they won't spin. So I'm going to probably try to... What I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to place my yellow one in the middle. I'm kind of going to do a pattern sort of like this. So the yellow one will be in the middle and up higher. Let me move it like this. I'm going to put the yellow one in the middle up higher and the orange and the red a little bit lower. So that's how I'm going to do that. So what I need to do is gauge and see, is that too tall? No, I think that's really good. So I'm going to leave this one this height and I'm just going to grab it, place it right down in the middle. And I can feel that it went down all the way in there and it hit the bottom of the of the pan. Yep. So what I'm going to do is load the bottom of my piece up here with glue. And remember, glue it up. That's what it's all about. If you don't have a glue skillet, put a bunch of glue on the bottom of it for stability. It goes down into the hole that you already made and it helps it hold it helps hold it tight. So I'm going to push up just a little bit on my camera so you guys can see the height that we have going on here. Okay. And what we need to do next is make sure that we can get these two guys where we want them. So I want to get them to about, I'm going to kind of come off the table here. About right here. So I'm going to look to see. I'm just going to cut it off. I eyeballed it, and I'm going to cut it off. Let's see how this, what's this, what's this made of? Oh, it's just a, a plastic, you guys. It's just kind of cut pretty simply. Nothing too bad. 
So if I push this one all the way down, this is about where I'm going to be. And let me test it out because I'm going to do that before I cut this one. So I'm going to make sure. So I'm just going to push this all the way over to the right side. I'm getting it pretty far over here because even though I'm pushing it down here, I want to make sure it clears it. You see, you know, that issue could happen and then your pieces won't blow in the wind because if you see here, they're hitting each other and they're not spinning. Whereas I have it lower. You see how cute that is? So I'm going to put this one pretty much far over to the edge. Just testing it out. Yep, so that's a pretty good height. And actually, you know, there's nothing saying I can even go even shorter over here, so I'll do like this. But I think I'm gonna try to leave, try to, I'm gonna try to get it as close to that height as possible. So I'm gonna take the piece that I cut off of the one and then line it up here on the table down here. I'm gonna line it up on the table here and that's where I'm gonna cut my other one. So I can get as close as I possibly can to this one here. Now I'm in, there's, there's rocks under there. There's no guarantee those rocks are gonna be the same height or the same size as the others, but Look how pretty close that is, you guys. That's pretty awesome. So um, there's nothing saying that it's going to be exactly or identical, but I don't, I don't deal in identical, you guys. I like to do things a little different. I like to have them off a little bit. Look how cute that is. Makes me happy. I love wind spitters. Um, I like solar things for my yard. My husband likes them too, like bird baths and all kinds of like yard art. I got some huge metal flowers from Costco. If you guys know what flowers I'm talking about, my other, my fellow Costco shoppers. I have huge metal flowers from Costco in my backyard and, um, I just, I like all kinds of stuff out. I got one, of, I got a couple pink ones from my backyard and then the other spinner that I just made, I have a couple of those from my backyard too. I put them in my pots already when I bought all this stuff last week. I couldn't say no. Like my husband likes the solar stuff. He's like a sucker for solar lights and things. And um, my weakness is about anything else that goes in the backyard, whether it's ceramic or solar or, I mean, oh, hummingbirds. Hummingbirds are huge out here in Vegas, especially in the spring. I mean, technically all year long, they don't ever go away in Vegas. Um, but they're just amazing little creatures. So uh, I dig, really dig hummingbirds. Look how cute that is, you guys. And I mean, we got the proper weight on this. So I mean, it's not going anywhere. You get a good gust of wind, because let me tell you guys, it gets windy out here, okay? <laughs> That's going to be super cute. Now see... I'm looking at this one here. It's a little crooked, but I like it. Nothing is going to be perfect, and don't be afraid. Imperfections are just human. It just, it, to me, I, I like them. It's, it's nothing's meant to be absolutely perfect, and trust me, I'm a, I'm a neat freak, you guys. I like things straight and orderly. I like things a certain way, but when it comes to your creative abilities and your processes, nothing has to be perfect, and again, this is my opinion. If you're one of those people that you like things exactly measured correctly, then you probably don't want to watch my videos because I'll tell you one thing, lots of my stuff that I do basically is based on imperfection. And that's what I think some of the stuff, that's where some of the most pretty stuff, prettiest stuff comes from, in my opinion, is if it's imperfect, that's what makes it, that's what makes it beautiful. So this is just the beginning. So emotional moment over. <laughs> Here's the... Here's the main meat and potatoes of this project, you guys. It's a little crooked. This one's straight. This one's not. Eh, this one could move this way a little bit more, but I'm not going to rip the project apart to do that. I like it. I like it the way it is. So now we're going to work on the base. And you guys, this is where we're going to do a lot of the same things that we did, but with just different, um, different supplies. So I'm going to pan you guys back down so you see more of my craft table here, okay? And basically, I want to fill in the whole bottom with this burlap. And you guys will see shortly that um, this is a new rotary cutter I got at Joann's a couple, like maybe a month or two ago. They were all like 50% off. So these Fisker ones are really sharp and really expensive. And I got them for a really good deal. So it's just a retractable one. And then you have to hit the button to close it. But this is where I like to cut mesh and burlap with. So what I'm going to do is... 
Um, I'm going to just go off of my normal, um, normal practices like we would if we were making a wreath or if we were making a, um, a different, you know, one of the normal projects. I've made centerpieces before you guys have seen that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pretend that a 10 inch square because, oh wait, no wait, this is nine feet, isn't it? This is nine feet. So I want to make it square. So since this is not only nine foot wide, I'm going to make it nine feet long. So this big white square here is 12. So nine, 10, 11, no, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I need to cut it. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine. I need to cut it on this line here. So that's where I need to cut it on the 21. All right. I just want to make sure you guys, I'm not messing too much up. So let's just test out a nine by nine square and see what it looks like. Since I haven't done this, you guys are coming along for the ride. Let's see how this works out. So here is a nine by nine square, okay? Let's bring our project a little closer. And we're gonna do like we do when we're doing a ruffle technique for a mesh wreath. So I'm gonna take it in the middle and I'm just going to use my two fingers, my middle finger and my index finger, and I'm going to pinch it until it turns into basically a bow tie. It's a little floppy, but I like it. And it's also shedding, which is again normal. So we're going to do kind of like if you guys have seen my Easter Bunny mesh centerpiece, the same thing. We're going to take the uh, floral pin, sorry guys, lost that, and we're going to place it right here in the middle. We're going to take that and push it right down in the middle where we pinched everything. And then underneath, you got to take your hand underneath and push your loops up. If you see here, that's how you're going to basically dip this guy in. Now it's a little bit more awkward, a little bit more cumbersome because you have a lot more, it might be easier to hold your thumb in the middle. You have a lot more to hold on to, but however you can maneuver it, hold that in the middle and then you're going to dip those two ends into the glue skillet. So let's just, you know what, hold on, let's test it out first before I glue it in and see if this is just too much. This might be too much. I don't know guys, let's test this out. I'm not I'm not really digging that. It doesn't really go deep enough. I mean, let's try it again. You're gonna get another piece right here next to it and another piece next to that. So no, 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 no. I'm forgetting my own my own process here. This might stick up a little bit, but all the pieces next to it are going to push it together like it was in a wreath, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fine. So go with your gut, Whitney. See, I'm just I'm second guessing myself, guys, because this is just something I made up on the fly. I had half the supplies with me in the store and didn't know if I was going to be able to do anything, but I really wanted to try, and then I forgot and remembered at the same time I have this wonderful old mesh, or um, it's not mesh, this old burlap I had bought from years ago, so let's just kind of throw this together and I'm going to go ahead and fill the whole bottom in with, with this ruffle technique. Um, and instead of cutting out, you guys let me know in the comments since I'm still, I'm still working out how you guys really want me to do these videos. Um, but there are going to be definitely a lot more YouTube videos and a lot more videos for my patrons uh, through Patreon. And if you would like to support me through Patreon, you're going to get extra rewards. Um, there's a link in the description for Patreon, um, and that will be uh, basically if you want to help support me continue to buy supplies and do these projects, and then Patreon uh, patrons who pledge will get uh, different videos and any paid tutorial. If you're paying me at that price point, you will get that tutorial for free. So basically what I'm going to do now, guys, is you're just going to see me speed this up a little bit, and I'm just going to keep cutting and adding to the project.
Okay, guys. All right, what did you think about that? Did you guys like the video speeding up a little bit more, or did you want me just to cut away and then come back? So basically, that's kind of cute. You see all these ruffles you got going on? It's just a big burlapy ruffle. That's the part that makes me happy. So, now that we got all that ruffles cut in, and, uh, put out, and basically I used about half of that roll too. So, um, just make sure you're gonna use a whole roll, basically. I used a whole roll of nine by nine. So if you do 10 by 10, or you know, just experiment a little bit. Experiment with, uh, ooh, excuse guys. Experiment um, with you know, the length of burlap and the length of ruffle that you want. Um, you will be always be able to uh, adjust for the size of the, the base or the base in the planter you're using underneath your bucket or your basket. Um, just experiment and see what works best for you with your um, particular size of, of, of uh, container you're using. Let me push down a little bit more. So now I'm going to make a few bows. And by bows, I mean I'm going to do the same looping issue or the same looping process. And we're going to add raffia in there with it. So this is my old, old raffia, guys. I, I use this in different projects. So it's kind of a nightmare to work with. But it's going to make it super cute. Now, I don't know if this is exactly going to be... Um, Oh, I don't know um, the word I'm looking for. I don't know if this is considered weatherproof because of the raffia, but um, we'll get through it. It'll be fine. So basically, guys, I forgot to mention, we're going to need some pipe cleaners in a comparable color. Um, just grab a few of them. I don't know how many I'm going to use. And in order to get the depth we need, because we're going to need to push these in between the, 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 the projects to get to the styrofoam, um, um, we're going to need a specific amount of length, too. So I'm just going to do like a little test one first, kind of like we did when we cut the spinners. I'm just going to kind of do a test one first just to see if it's, you know, the right length. So I'm just going to dovetail this particular ribbon first. And you guys, dovetailing is cut your, your fold your ribbon in half and then cut diagonally up from the folded side towards your wired side. <clears throat> and I'm actually not going to actually even do a ribbon. Now that I think about it, I'm not going to do a bow. Should I just do ribbon tails like little... No, I'm going to do a bow. I'm going to do bows. I like loops. So I'm just going to test out a, a very simple one loop bow. One loop bow. Let me make sure I have this guesstimated the right size and then just kind of see how it's going to look. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so basically what I'm doing here is this particular length is going to be comparable to the length I made my, my uh, burlap pieces. And this is a 5 inch ribbon tail. So right here is 5 inches down where I pinch. Then I'm bringing my loop around pinching it again and this particular piece here is four inches so it's eight inches between where I'm holding and where you need to bring it back up to your finger to loop again and pinch. I'm going to twist the, the ribbon so it's facing you and then now I have this loop to gauge by. Okay, Make another loop, pinch it, twist your tail towards you and then cut off however long you think that needs to be. So now you've got one, one ribbon down we're going to move on to our second color. I chose red. I mean, you can dovetail everything at the end. Um, it's just a habit of mine to do it on the very first one. I don't know why. So I just kind of stick everything here in my thumb and my finger. You guys know from my live streams, I like to call that my thumb pit. <laughs> so then now I already have loops in my hand here. Put the pan this way. I already have the loops in my hand here that I can gauge when I'm making this one by, and then kind of just stuff that in there under your your thumb again. Bring your next loop up, and I have it here to measure with this orange one. Stuff that in your finger again. Twist it to make sure the right side is showing, and then cut your tail. Okay. So while I'm still holding all of this in my thumb and forefinger, okay. Remember, you don't have to use a lot of pressure, okay. You don't have to use a lot, just hold that together. Hopefully your raffia is not in an eternal mess like mine is. Um, just kind of find some here and kind of pull it out. 
There, see how I just kind of ripped a little bit out? Do you see that, you guys, that piece? And basically, let me throw this on the floor. We're going to do with this the same thing we did in the previous arrangement with the deco tubing. So basically, find your end, okay? This got wrapped around the ribbon, so hold on. There's an end of one, there's the end of the other. So find your two ends, right? And I'm going to put this in here in my thumb with me, and I'm going to pull and then bring it back. You're just making these loops, right? Back and forth. Pull, bring it back, and pinch it with your thumb. Pull, bring it back, make a loop, pinch it with your thumb until you run out. So then now you have a little bundle of raffia. And remember, if it falls apart, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world because it's raffia. You see, this is basically what you end up with. So you're gonna place that right in the center of your bow. And then when we place that in there, that's gonna give it that extra little it's just a little little pop of interest. It just makes it just makes it happier. It makes it seem very it does seem almost farmhouse, but maybe that's subconscious on my level. That could be me doing that. Um, I'll take that. I'll own it. Um, oh, you know what I forgot to do, guys, is I forgot to cut these in half. Um, these you don't need the full pipe cleaner for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that probably about right there and then pull this through more. You only need half of a pipe cleaner. Sorry about that. So then um, basically I'm taking it and I'm just going to keep twisting and twisting and twisting. And what I am going to do, guys, is I'm going to use a steel pick to put this in. But if you do not have a steel pick machine, you, no worries. Don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world because you can use... Um, pretty much anything else. There's these floral picks here that you can get these little wooden sticks with a kind of a copper wire on them. Um, you would basically at that point what I used to do before I got my pick machine was on this piece here is I would glue the stick to the middle and then I would wrap my uh, chenille stem around the stick here like this and then I would take this copper piece. Now remember this is already glued into the bow and then you can cut this piece to put in. That's how I used to do everything before I had a steel pick machine. That steel pick machine was an absolute, just an absolute gift. It was, it, I mean, literally it was a gift from my husband for Christmas, so that's what's hilarious. Um, but it is amazing. If you can make the investment, do so. I mean, I did, I couldn't for a while. That's why it ended up being a Christmas present. I um, I had to wait. It's, it's, it's a decent purchase, but I've also heard people in my group and on Facebook have said that um, they've gotten them on eBay for like 40 bucks. They've seen people selling them in their craft supply, Facebook groups, stuff like that. So just keep your eye out, guys. It, it'll happen someday. Um, so basically, I have my steel pick machine off to the side right here, and I'll just pull it forward for this first one, but I don't want you guys to have to watch every single one. So I'm probably going to do maybe four or five of this exact bundle again. And then I'll show you real quick. This is basically a steel pick machine. Right here is where the picks come out. So I, if you have one, I'm going to place this piece of my my chenille stem into the pick. So I advance the steel pick. I'm going to place that down in here. Press that down to clamp it, and then push down harder for it. These teeth right here to clamp that on. And then when you pull that out, that's basically what you end up with. That's a steel pick. Very sharp. So be careful. And that's what we're going to use and place that in there. So I'm probably going to do that five or six more times. So if you guys want, I'm going to experiment. Again, let me know if you like what the videos sped forward or not. You guys tell me. Um, um, the bow itself, once we place this in here, is going to kind of get all jumbled around. But we can do some more arranging if, if we need to once we get it in here. So let's just experiment and see what this first one looks like on our actual piece, on our project. So I planned on putting it right here up front. Let's see what that looks like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this guy this way just to see. I'm going to trade these two so I can kind of do a little bit of red and a little bit of orange on each side. And you got that little bit of raffia sticking out there in the middle. Look how cute that is. Isn't that kind of cute? That's so cute. Okay, so now that I've fluffed it, I'm going to pull it back out. And I'm just going to put some glue from my glue skillet on the end. Look, you guys can see over there. On the end of my steel pick. 
And then I'm going to place it right back into the original spot where I had it. And again, this is not necessarily weatherproof ribbon, but it is indoor-outdoor use. It's okay if it was on your wreath. Just, you know, make sure it's, you know, if it's on your patio, it's in a covered spot. You know, the normal stuff. Don't leave it, you know, don't let it float in the pool kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's just your normal, uh, your normal prerequisites for any other kind of thing. So I'm going to do that probably five or six more times all around the base to add the interest that we want for it. Welcome back. We have done four more bows, an additional four bows for a total of five bows. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to place them into the arrangement in sporadic places. What I chose five is because I have an odd number of spinners. I have three spinners, so I'm going to do an odd number of bows. I don't want to, you know, load it up too much. Um, and then, of course, there's always going to be a front and a back to every project. So I'm going to try to find like a little weird place to kind of nestle these in together. Maybe some will be per so you know some are going to have a, a a little bit of a perfect spacing, some aren't, and that's pretty much how I want it to go. I want things. I don't want anything to be even. Uh, this really doesn't have a front or a back. Some things do. If you choose a front or a back, then you know power to you. I mean, if this is going to go up against a wall, like if you put it outside and it's just up against your patio wall, you're not going to see it. It's not necessarily a centerpiece. Then by all means, um, compensate for that. Don't place as many, um, don't place as many items if you don't think they're going to, you know, be seen very well. Uh, you don't have to worry about placing bows on the back of it if you're going to make a back. That type of thing. So I'm just dovetailing these. I didn't dovetail any of the ones when I was making them over there. So that's this is about it, you guys. This is where we're going to put these little finishing touches on it, and then we're going to be done. Um, so I'm going to put one right here on the very end. I'm going to kind of push this guy apart. Push that guy there. Gonna have that kind of sit down a little bit off to the side. This one's more of, you know, this one's more leisurely backyard, not necessarily party yard. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's this one doesn't scream party. This one screams, you know, maybe some iced tea, a little bit of lemon kind of day. That's what this one tells me. This is again more farmhouse. I, you guys, I always tend to, to end up doing that farmhouse stuff that I, I, I just love it. I can't help it. I think the plaid with the burlap, and of course, it's the colors I chose too. You know, the red, orange, and yellow is very country. It's very, it's very summertime. It just kind of makes me happy. Remember, that's like one of my golden rules, guys. Do what makes you happy. And right now, these colors make me happy. 
So this is just another, this is my take on um, some dollar store supplies. I know you guys have been asking me before if you watched my previous dollar store challenge. I made a, um, a cookie sheet organizer and that entire project was with Dollar Tree supplies. There wasn't any one thing that I did not purchase at Dollar Tree. There were things, sorry, there were a few things that I did not purchase at Dollar Tree, but you could purchase at Dollar Tree. The only reason I didn't was because I already own them and I didn't want to um, duplicate supplies I already had just because I, you know, why spend another dollar if I already have like 500 of them, like the picture hangers and um, there was something else. I'd have to go back and watch the video, but that previous Dollar, uh, dollar Tree video you guys really like it. I got a lot of good comments. I got a lot of good ideas. A couple people have already sent me pictures of ones that they've made. And they're all super cute. They're really cute. And that whole project was under $15. And I also got some really good raffia out of it. I, put, I used green and yellow raffia in that project. And it turned out so super cute. So check out that video. I'll put it at the end of uh, this video um, after the pictures. So... Um, I'll have some still pictures up at the end. You guys always know, I, you see that in my YouTube videos all the time. So you'll have still pictures up at the end. And then, um, of course, in the description, you can always get to all my links. You can get to Instagram, Facebook, um, Etsy, and now my Patreon page. Don't forget, you can always help me out and support me on Patreon so I can keep making these videos for you guys. And the patrons that are already supporting me, are forever indebted in my heart. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, it's kind of humbling to know that people actually want to help and support me making videos. I mean, it makes me feel good that you guys like learning from me. There's just things that I like to do, and one day I decided, I said, you know, why don't I make a video? Because when I wanted to have the help, YouTube didn't exist, and... Now it's pretty much my go-to for so many different things. I mean, even the other, uh, in another aspect of life, I needed to change an air filter in my car. And my husband was like, hey, look it up on YouTube. And guess what? Lo and behold, there's a video on it. So it saved me $90 because I didn't have to pay the dealership to do something that was literally two little plastic hooks and an $11 filter. And they charge 90 bucks for that. So, again... I like to help. It's fun. And creating stuff like this makes you happy. Anytime you can make your own piece and put it on your table, and then every time you walk past that, you get the you get the reward of knowing that you made it. You know, like you know, you did that, you you made it with your own two hands. And at some point everybody needs a little help. Everyone needs a little bit of guidance. And I love being here for you guys for that. And you guys help me. I've learned so much stuff from you guys since I started this YouTube channel, and I'm coming up on a year in May. A year in May, I will have this channel for, sorry, in May, I will have had this channel for one year, and it has been awesome. And I cannot wait to see what the next year brings us, what new projects we're going to do. Remember, if you, if you join my Patreon, we're going to come up with some ideas and projects and I'm going to do special things with them directly, so if you want, um, you know, if you want first dib at the videos, you can watch them ad-free instead of having the ads on YouTube. You'll get to watch them first. I will take suggestions and hints and requests from Patreon first. Um, you guys just add, join, join me up on uh, Patreon. The link's in the description. And you guys, it's as low as a dollar. Gets you a Patreon, gets you the Patreon free, gets you into Patreon and you can see the, the you know the little things I post in the feed. But five dollars will get you into a private Facebook group and then we'll also get you all any um any tutorials I put up there at that price point. Mo mainly the ten dollar price point is where all my tutorials are gonna be at my paid tutorials. I'm just gonna cut this a little bit shorter guys this one's a little bit too long and so is this one down here. Just gonna cut two more tails and we're done and I'll show you guys the end, the end product. So if you have more questions about Patreon, just go ahead and put them in the comments below and I'll get to them and I'll answer them with you guys as soon as we're done.
So let me pan up right here, guys. And this is this is our end piece. Look how cute it is. Oh. Sometimes I don't think these things are ever going to work out, and then I'm just pleasantly surprised when they do. It's just like, I mean, that's so far, look, I mean, look how cute this is. To put that on your table, it's just like a little bucket of burlap and gingham ribbon. Is that gingham? Plaid? Whatever. Picnic plaid? Who knows? It's so cute. I love that. That's going to be so cute outside. So there's your, your country Dollar Tree with a few little spins here because I couldn't find anything at Dollar Tree to fill that in with. Um, their greenery was a little bit like neon green. It didn't look, I mean, it looked way too fake. I mean, obviously artificial flowers are fake flowers, but that stuff looked way too fake, so I didn't buy it. And then don't forget about this girl. So we made two different little Dollar Tree wind spinners. So you got a uh, backyard patio party. And then you've got maybe a backyard lemonade tea sip and have some conversation with a friend, more country laid back. Uh, remember, I'd say both of these need to be under a patio cover and overhang. They're going to fade with time. They're going to fade with sunshine. Relatively waterproof. I know this one should be mainly waterproof because it's all mesh and tool. Uh, but this one, you got raffia, you got some ribbon in it. So, you know, you might have some issues with either one, but that's what we did, guys. What do you think? You guys let me know in the comments below. Send me some love, share, heart, subscribe. Uh, consider joining me on Patreon if you guys enjoyed this video and you like learning from me. Um, I have so much more in store for all of you. Um, I'm super happy that you guys asked me to do some Dollar Tree stuff. It kind of really worked out. This really makes me smile. <laughs> so you guys keep sending in those requests and we'll continue to make some really great things together. Um, I'm absolutely enjoying every second of this. And um, that's really about it, you guys. I'm going to continue to work on my videos. I'm going to make some tutorials. And then I've got uh, lots, lots of great things planned for you guys, especially with my patrons. And then also regular Facebook Lives. I'm still working on a YouTube Live eventually. And um, I'm just excited to see what this brings. So um, until next time, you guys, take care. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.